Okay, now we're recording. I appreciate everybody joining me today. Today's a real special day. Um, occasionally you come across individuals in your life that you, um, for whatever reason, they become a part of your family. They become a part of who you are and they kind of, every time you see them, there's always a smile to your face. I was fortunate enough a few years ago that a young man held a Sam, Sam Hain winter night celebration at his house and we invited a bunch of people. Matter of fact, it was such a moving experience. I wrote about it in one of my books. And these three men sitting in front of me are the men we had it at their house. That is Mike McDougall, Brandon Aaron McDougall, and Chase McDougall. They are the, 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 the leaders of the pack, so to speak, of Team Dark Horse. Mike, why don't you tell them a little bit about who you are, where you come from? Uh, thanks, Brian. Well, um, I'm just a poor country boy, really. Um, I, I say that kind of with tongue in cheek, but I was born about two miles from the Burgess River on an old uh, highway. Uh, we really didn't have a lot of uh, anything other than just hard work and dedication. Uh, we had electricity and propane. You had to go get your water and you had to hustle to the outhouse if you had to go, you know. So <laughs> it's funny, my, my mom, though, you know, really said my parents were the great examples. And I think my mom uh, probably gave me the best advice one time. She said, you know, son, it's okay. Uh, to be poor. It's not okay to be dirty, stupid, or ill-mannered. So uh, I learned a, I learned a uh, appreciation through them of uh, discipline and dedication to hard work and mostly about education and making sure I educate myself. So that's kind of where I come from. You know, it's kind of important too because you are you are a force recon marine, right? Correct? Yes, sir. I was uh, what they called deep recon platoons at the time because uh, they just disbanded force. Yep. Okay, and you also have a master's degree in business administration, correct? Yeah, I've got a master's. I got a couple of bachelor's degrees, a couple of associates, and a slew of freaking certifications and stuff like that. And and as far as your um, martial arts are concerned, you are a master of kung fu. Yes. Sir. And and what all that crowd Krav Maga? Well, we were, uh, we were one of my proudest moments is I got my black belt with my sons in Krav Maga a couple of years ago. And uh, we've also certified in Filipino martial arts and uh, we've taken master of defense, uh, uh, modern combat, combat uh, back in uh, so you know, we've, had a, we've had a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know, once we got our masters, it was, let's see how far we can really take this and see what we really know. Now I want to break down to the really important part with Brandon and Chase. And um, Brandon, your, your background, you grew up in an environment of a man that has a passion for education and a passion for martial arts and the discipline that is born of a military environment, but also the love of a, of a fun mom. Right? Lisa's a charming individual. So you've got this real unique environment to grow up in and it shaped both of you. Both of you have been champions in your own right. Um, what was your uh, background in all of this martial arts? How far did you take it? Um, so uh, the old man tells me that I formally started in uh, our traditional base martial art Kung Fu Sansu when I was three years old. Uh, we have photo album pictures of me actually as a baby and a Johnny Jumper trying to emulate him in the background with what he's doing. Uh, I love it. So after, I believe I earned my black belt as a child. I can't really tell you how old I was and then I earned my black belt again uh, as an adult um, under my father as well in Kung Fu Sansu. And then um, after that, I was about 17 years old when I earned my black belt again from him. And he kind of kicked me out of the house. I forget the terminology for it, but the Japanese have something <laughs> that they call it where it's like a walkabout where your master kicks you out for you to go out into the world to kind of test yourself. And that was probably around like 2005. And uh, I started after that going to different martial arts gyms and training in uh, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. Um, so I started formally training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in 2005 um, under a guy who used to compete in the UFC named Matt Wyman from here in Tulsa. And then um, we actually all three uh, started training when Team Nogueira Tulsa came in at, uh, here in town. We became their striking instructors at one point after we started competing in San Xiao and winning. Uh, so. I mean, my, my martial arts background is pretty extensive. Uh, yeah, I'm a, now I'm a master in Kung Fu Sansu. Uh, we're all three black belts in Krav Maga, and then we're both, uh, we're all three certified as level two instructors in Krav Maga, which means we're certified to teach military and police tactics uh, that they share from uh, Israel. And then we're also uh, 
we're all level one Filipino certified. I'm the only one who's level two certified in the group um, under our uh, ICSU uh, association. And then um, I have a uh, second degree brown belt in judo, a fourth degree purple belt in jiu jitsu. Um, I was the first amateur Midwestern Sand Shao lightweight champion and the first Midwestern regional Sand Shao lightweight champion. Um, I've competed in kickboxing since 2008 up to about 2015. I have over 40 amateur and professional fights combined through Sand Shao kickboxing and MMA. At one time, I was uh, the local uh, XFL uh, cage fighting lightweight uh, champion. Um, uh, I've been kind of inactive since about 2015, so almost about the last four years, um, where I started training in more tactical martial arts like the Krav Maga. And then in January, um, from a good family friend and former roommate of mine I lived with, uh, talked him into going out and trying to get certified in Mastro Defense, which has been primarily created by a gentleman named Fred Mastro out of Belgium. And Chase and I are now the only two people in the state of Oklahoma actually certified to teach it. Uh, so it's kind of been where we've been taking it right now. So like you said earlier though, my dad, uh, you know, being from a military background and also a teacher kind of experimented with us like good teachers would do and found a way to kind of train us. <laughs> So, uh, you or know, should. or should, <laughs> and, and so it was quite a uh, different, much upbringing <laughs> than uh, I think a lot of people think, you know, uh, it was a Mr. Miyagi blend with GI Joe is the best way I would kind of, this is way to do it, man. You know. <laughs> and so Chase, you're the, you're the one that kind of inspired my, my desire to have this discussion with you guys, all three of you, I have immense respect for all three of you for a lot of reasons, mostly because I think you're just good fucking people. But you said something to me years ago, all these people out here that we know in these communities that are trying to trying to do this thing that you and your brother have done all of your life. And it struck me as, as a very powerful moment. And it's something that really stuck with me. Okay, yeah, that, that here's a family that has this, lived this path of developing masculinity, of developing a warrior ethos that few people that I personally know have been able to achieve and i and i look at you and, and i'm there's the first thought that comes to my mind is chase learned that shit so brandon wouldn't beat him to death <laughs> <laughs> right. that was a motivation i would say <laughs> but, like, but like we were talking at one time you were the uh you you were the number six you were ranked number six in the central region of the country in your mma career correct that's right and uh, you have a similar background. Where's your forte in all of this? Just, I've trained a little Kung Fu with you. And it's been flipping awesome. That maestro thing was brutal, but it was fantastic. Um, yeah, that was a good, that was a good day. Um, what's, what's your background look like? So I want to complete the set here so that everyone understands we're not talking with people that just have walked in off the street with something they read in a book because I, I see that a lot. Um. Again, my background, I'm a master in Kung Fu Sansu. I've been studying Kung Fu Sansu for about 25 years now. Since you were three. Yeah. yeah. And uh, again, Black Belt and Krav Maga, uh, certified to teach law enforcement and military. Uh, again, got the training in Filipino martial arts and uh, certified Mastro. I've got a uh, three stripe purple belt and jiu-jitsu um did extensive judo i never got ranked but i've done it extensively especially a lot of no gi and uh i wrestled all the way through high school and i've just been really active with uh, martial arts in general my entire life never stopped uh i haven't fought in a while but planning to rectify that here shortly but you but here's the interesting thing your wife just had a fight Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And she, uh, she's a really good warrior in her own rights herself. And uh, it's a, it's a tough household. <laughs> yeah. So when you get a group of men that, that, that Mike, when you raise a, a couple of men, and I'm going to call that, that term men as a solid foundation in this case, you raise them up with this idea, this aspect, but you're also running a gym, a fairly successful operation from what I can tell you. You keep the lights on, you keep it running, you keep people coming in the door. When you're trying to 
build the discipline necessary to run a successful business. What's the best lesson you can give somebody that, that wants to make that transition? Everybody has that dream of being their own boss. But I think you're aware as most people that it takes a lot of marketing and it takes a lot of discipline and you got to put some hard work in when other people are at home watching TV. Yeah, you know, I think the best thing I can tell people, something I learned probably through my parents was best uh, brought to the bear by the Marine Corps and that's uh, accomplish the mission. And first of all, know what the hell the mission is you're on. So many people, when they get into a business, they do it as a hobby, really. They don't, they don't really commit themselves. And, you know, if you're really, really going to do a business, then, you know, you need to understand that you need to do a business plan. And that business plan, there's models out there. You can get one off the internet. You don't have to pay anybody anything. We never did. Right. But you just, you just go out there and you do your homework, legitimate like they say, you know, and don't, don't pull the trigger until you know you've got that in place. Now, I will tell you, when we got Sansu Tulsa, we've been um, supplementing Ms. Yoon's, uh, then when Ms. Yoon's Judo Taekwondo, uh, hell, she'd been here since the 1990, and in 2011, she gave us about a 25-day warning that she was closing the place and retiring. So we put together a really fast business plan, my uh, nephew Steve Hill and myself, and you know, off we went, but, um, you know, we were already being successful. We knew we had the student base to carry it and things like that because we've been here since 2007 uh, right. teaching classes and such. So, you know, I think that's, that's really it. And, you know, when you start talking about, you know, anything with your students or when you're talking about your son, it's really about your boundaries and expectations. You know, uh, they'll <laughs> probably don't finally remember, but you know, when they were real little, they got to come out from the backyard to the front yard, but they had that driveway to that driveway, you know, and they had that, and then later it was that mailbox to that mailbox, and they, they grew by mailboxes, and then whenever they effed up, it came back to the front yard, you know, type thing, you know, so that one's funnier than heck. So, so, so we gone. met, we met, we, I guess we all kind of met in, uh, at the Sam Hyde. I mean, we've kind of known each other. We've seen each other around. I think, I remember when the first time I came across you was Chase, maybe it might've been with uh, with Logan and Mike McGonagall or something. It sure maybe was, Chase. yeah. Yeah, I think it was out there at Mike McGonagall's house, wasn't it? It was at his wedding when you married them. Oh yeah, that's right, it was, okay. What a trip, I forgot I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. That's yeah. funny. Dude, man, yeah, I did marry them and I'm tickled with them too. I mean, he's, I've known Mike his old, for a long time. I damn near killed him twice, but I saved his life. Dangerous once. man in his own right. Yes. He is. He is that. He's double jointed in every joint because he got on my back one day and I grabbed his leg and pulled it all the way up to bite his toe. And he didn't scream at all. Yes. <laughs> you could have taken the toes and not hurt a peep out of that guy. I know, right? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. You've gravitated towards this, this heathen kind of lifestyle. And you've done so successfully. I put you and Anne on the cover of a book, Sunshine of a Pagan Art, which it was just a fantastic. I, I was grateful you did that. When you, is, this is going to kind of tie together with, with what Mike was saying, the boundaries and the limitations and building that business plan. When you got into also true and you started wearing those hammers, you and Brandon both, what brought you into this into this lifestyle? What was it that, that triggered your imagination so much so that you decided to change the foundation of what is largely considered normal spiritual belief in the world? Such a radical departure from it. You know, uh, you, you say change the foundation and I didn't see it like that. I felt like I was coming from that foundation naturally as a person and as a human anyways in the first place. Uh, it was, I've, you know, I've always been really big into our hereditary, you know, every family has the storyteller, the person that keeps the, the flames of the family alive by telling their story. And that's just kind of naturally always been me. And I've always dug into the history books of our family. And uh, the McDougal story is quite a, uh, quite a colorful one. And there's a lot of history there. And uh, I just kept digging and eventually came across um, a native European faith, you know, pre-Christian European faith. And, uh, oh, let me look at that. And I'm like, that is pretty much how I've seen the world through my eyes coming up, even somewhat being raised Christian. Uh, 
I, it wasn't a big life change. I go, whoa, well, this is it. This is exactly how I felt internally my entire life. And it gave me the permission to have the external expression of that internal feeling that I've always felt. That's an interesting term that you call it permission because I've, I've read that some people really struggle with, with uh, certain aspects of being successful on any part and they will literally write themselves notes. You have my permission to go be successful at this. You have my permission to forgive yourself for this. There's, they literally don't understand that sometimes that's a very real and necessary um, post along the way, if you will, for someone's journey in this life. You know, and, and you mentioned to me, all roads lead to Rome, all roads lead to that one world of death. Um, sometimes along that path, we have to understand there are markers that tell us yay or nay. I think permission to be great is one. Right? Yeah, if yeah, yeah, you will, just taking off of what he said there, we run into this all the time. We have people that come in here and want to excel or whatever. Maybe they've had an emotional significant event. That's why they're in here taking the problem like, ah. And, you know, we'll look at it and we'll stop and say, hey, look, you know, you need to give yourself permission to succeed. And we do it quite often, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's a common theme. Very common. Our uh, family motto in Gaelic is Buino Boss, and that means conquer or die. And so to us, you, there is no other option. <laughs> if you want something. I love it. It's fitting. It, Second know. place in war is death. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> So what about you, Brandon? What brought you into it? Was your brother's example? Um, I'd say a little bit of that, like uh, not to get into too much of a uh, bum story about some family history, but um, kind of as Chase alluded, um, we're about four years apart in age. Um, and so my mother's, my grandmother. He's older and uglier. Yeah, so he thinks. Um, <laughs> anyways, my mother's, uh, my mother's mom, my grandmother was a very, very... Uh, religious christian and um I, in my early days i spent a lot of time with her and uh you could say i drank a little bit too much of the kool-aid and um <laughs> so uh, long story short at the end of her uh time leaving this world um it left a giant void uh in me and due to some things that had gone on behind the scenes in our family um it really put a very bad taste in my mouth about the uh faith that i had worshipped basically for my whole life and it left me for probably the first time with no answers that somebody had wrote in a book could uh, resonate in me to find, you know, a way out of that, uh, I guess, dark place I was in. And um, that was kind of a little bit after that time uh, and through fighting, I kind of realized that I was kind of considering myself to be more of a realist, as I put it. Because if you punch me in the face, it hurts. If I punch you in the face, it hurts as well. So I understood that and that was real to me. And then... Um, Chase was kind of getting into it at that time, and um, he actually showed me the nine noble virtues, and kind of like how he was talking about earlier, it was probably the first thing in uh, quite a long time that resonated with me, and they, they were simple, normal, moral values that I had been raised with, right. and to me, it just made all the sense in the world, because it was basically about a lot of the stuff we fight over, about, you know, just don't be a lazy person and contribute, you know, I mean, and it's also about, you know, the it's honor, your responsibility. it's your responsibility. And those are things, again, that were values brought up to me, you know, as a child growing up from my father, you know, his job was to go to work so he could put food on the table and provide for us. My job was right. to go to school and get good, you know, get at least a C average, which was required for you to play in the sports. And if you didn't, you didn't do your job. And like at your work, you would get reprimanded. I got reprimanded at home. So, you know, to me, reading that uh, really kind of coincided. And then uh, the more I kind of dove into it and um, we started actually uh, ritualing, um, you know, um, I thought it was very appropriate how my mother nicknamed me as my fight name, The Storm, because she said as a child, nothing man-made or in nature could contain me and my fury. <laughs> and so... Um, at one of our very first rituals, um, it was kind of crazy as we all started uh, getting real into it. Um, my nickname really kind of came into play and how at my part, um, I basically called the storms. And so from that day forward, um, I kind of just realized that, uh, you know, this is where I should have been and what I should be doing. And so here we have been ever since. A welcome addition indeed. 
<laughs> so I do want to touch upon your, your success. See, so many people, when they come into Heathen or when they approach Austin Food, like you were saying, with a business, with a business, there's a goal. You know what you want to achieve. You know what you want to become. You know cash flow. You understand the taxes you're going to pay, what you can write off. You understand hiring employees. There's a very set set of rules as to how to be successful. There are literally millions of people that have done it. You can get it for free online. If you follow those steps, you too will enjoy that same success. It's not a hard task. It requires dedication and discipline. When you come into a new faith, you come into that, I think by and large, we fail to create that image of what we want to become. And I think there is a lot, there are a lot of heathens. There are a lot of also truers. There are a lot of pagans in general that do not have that solid image of what they want to become, what they want to look like, not what everybody thinks about them, but what they want to be happy, healthy, whole, physically fit, strong, capable, self-reliant, industrious. They can persevere. They're honest. They have courage. So when I see you two gentlemen, you three gentlemen roaming around, living good lives, working hard, uh, I know for a fact you guys work all day long and then you get off work and then you go into that gym and you train all night long every night, six days a week most times. Um, that's the kind of commitment that I don't see a lot of our fellow heathens wanting to put forth to be successful. They haven't given themselves permissions, but I think more often, the more accurate term is that they're sabotaging their own success. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of image, if you're going to leave, I mean, both of you are fairly young, but Mike, you've probably got some idea of it as I do, what kind of legacy I'm going to leave on the world. And I'm sure that you guys kind of have an idea of what you want to leave on the world. Mike, I mean, you have two sons. You brought up a way that most other heathens are, it's a pipe dream for them. They're still thinking about how to do it. And you've already done it. And it has resulted in men that have become something of their own accord. Um, what kind of legacy are you going to leave on the world with regards to this business, these children, these, uh, this life that you've lived, one of high adventure and education? You know, I think one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't know is my father was raised as an orphan. And uh, I found the McDougal Tartans and all that stuff, started feeding my sister, started doing the geology. And then when Chase actually started going into it, he enticed me to do my DNA. So to come find out, we're significant enough and have such a weird little Y chromosome or something like that, that they're trying to find us tied before uh, Gillian, the, uh, you know, Sutherland's father and all that further back. And so Brandon said something to me the other day at breakfast, and it was about, you know, our name is borrowed from our ancestors. And, you know, whether my ancestors were good or my ancestors were bad, you know, the thing I love about this right here is that I have a legacy before me and both of them carry the name on their back and you know they they become men among men uh you know we're all knuckleheads really in life you know but you know the thing of it is is it's the difference you're trying to make it's the positive steps you're trying to make you know my my hope for them is is that like they have already with the martial arts they're going to take whatever i've done and they're going to make it 10 times better you know i mean they're uh, it, it really gives me pleasure you know, to see what they can do and how far they take it. And, you know, for as long as the gods let me, then, you know, we're going to do it together, you know, right. and, uh, and, and the fact that they want me at their side, you know, is, is another thing because it's a choice, you know, it's not something that uh, is, you know, demanded, you know, we choose to be together and we choose to be the commitment to one another. And so, you know, I think it's just the commitment to them and, you know, as they're moving forward with their family, living by the virtues. You guys are close family. I think that's one of the things that I think it was one of the death nails of our ability to create communities and tribes was the nuclear family of the 1950s. You know, you send them up, they got to go off. Well, he's out at Harvard or he's in New York City and your family's all separated and not uh, and never getting back together. Once a year, they might see each other and then there's no communication. I, I see that. Uh, I see it's good to see some of that being overcome. Brandon, what kind of image are you trying to create? Do you have an image of what you want to be? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, um, kind of as I alluded to earlier, as a young man growing up and in the 80s, you G.I. Joe was a real big TV show back in the day. 
and my father being Marine Force recon from the Nam period and uh, having back in the day these Popeye sized forearms, um, I always yeah. kind of was like, I'm living with real GI Joe and uh, you know, um, ooh, raw, sign me up, let's go do this stuff. And um, for me, it's really about trying to live the life of what I've seen of men I've respected and how they've treated my father, um, you know, and especially from the time and period my father served and getting to see how men who would be considered a man's man among men would res give him the due respect and all that stuff just by his presence, um, you know, was something that I've always tried to really emulate, you know. Um, it's not been up until late, I guess, um, you know, I realized my own selfish endeavor and how much that's truly important. It is truly important when you read these uh, read these works. You know, these, um, I lost you there for just a second. I'm sorry. Yeah. When you read these works of these other men that are part of the masculinity industry, do they just roll off your uh, back like water off a duck's back? So, I mean, sometimes you know. I mean, um, I hate to you know sound like a millennial, but I saw a meme the other day, and um, it was funny because it was actually. It had the guy from uh, one of my favorite shows. I like to watch Peaky Blinders, a character named Thomas Shelby. And it right. just literally has in the quote, it says, here's a picture of a guy who said something that you think is relevant to you that's actually not. And then instead of it saying like anonymous or whoever, it says, get over yourself at the very bottom of like who this was to. And I actually thought that was very funny because that's something like, especially when we, you know, like we were talking earlier about the virtues you're talking about self-reliancy and industriousness and perseverance, you know, I, and you were talking about how they self-sabotage. Um, and that to me is actually what I think that they do to themselves. A lot of times you can interpret as a synonym, uh, you know, discipline for industriousness, just having the due diligence and, uh, uh, and discipline to stay on a task and see it through for the fruition of what it is. Um, you know, and that's been my thing is, is that, um, you know, something that also my father's told me a long time ago that I've always kind of uh, never truly believed for him is something that I wanted to emulate myself. I don't want to be forgotten, you know, and he says that he won't be forgotten because of his legacy. And to me, that's a fallacy because for as long as I live, my story is wrote because of the name I've borrowed from my ancestors and my father that was given to me. You know, um, at the end of the day, I want to be able to know that when I meet the gods and greet them, hopefully it's with a glorious death so I may feast um for, for until the time comes um you know i really just want to be considered as somebody who has changed the lives of people and the betterment for what men should be and what we should be doing in this if our goal is to truly die gloriously so we may be chosen as those select few it is your job and for you to strive to meet those qualities so that you can do that and that's what we do and that's why we come in and train and we push ourselves to those limits and we work a normal day job and we come in here to try to make this successful. You know, um, you know, I think it's, a, you know, I would love to give back to the actual heathen community and give these men a sense of actual truth, not a fallacy of what their idea or their concept is of what this culture should be. That's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. Um, Jace, what about you? I mean, I, and I've, I've enjoyed some really good conversations with you in, uh, in, in some in ceremonial settings and, and, and just around that fire. But um, you really drifted towards this spirituality. You really gravitated toward it and you bought into it whole all before they did. Um, it's led you to some pretty interesting places, some pretty interesting conclusions. What kind of image are you going to cultivate a legacy to leave on the world? What's this, uh, what's this image? What's this building within you? And then we're going to make fun of Matthias here in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, to me, uh, being raised strong, you know, it made me strong. And at a certain point, I realized that if I can be this strong, then it really honestly shouldn't just be mine and mine alone. My whole goal for pretty much as long as I can remember, even before heathenry, even before uh, fighting in the cage and any of that was, I want to be so strong that I can make others stronger. I've always said this, my strength is not my own and I can make other people strong. 
and that whether that be character or physically. We need to quantify that statement. You walk around at what, 145 pounds? I walk around at 145 pounds, five I, six. I weigh two. Point. I'm five nine. I weigh two thirteen. And the first time I walked in on that mat, you had me on my back before I even knew what the fuck happened. So let's that the strong thing is qualified. Let's go with that. We'll go from there. But I think you're right. I think we do. If we have these gifts, if we have. Uh, what is the Buddha said? A thousand candles can be lit from a single candle, and that candle doesn't diminish, or something along those lines. Right. Um, how'd you guys end up being instructors up at Dual Pine? Sorry, we lost. We lost that you, one a little bit. How did you guys end up as an in that instructor, as instructors up there at Dual Pine? Uh, well, a few years back. Um, I started following Operation Werewolf, came across them on social media. And uh, actually it was Paul, uh, Paul Wagner messaged me when he saw that I was a professional fighter and they actually uh, sponsored me through a few fights. Really? And uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's how I actually got in touch with those guys. And uh, then it was a couple years after that, he invited me out to teach at their Winter Wars event in Virginia at Old Pine. And uh, man, it just, it, that was the best event ever. And that really like being able to go outside of the gym into the woods and train with so many like-minded individuals, uh, guys with absolutely zero skill to guys that are like me who have been doing it their entire lives. Uh, it was just such a strong, strong event and uh, it was a really good time and they've asked me back almost every year since then, so. It is a good, I mean, it's not everybody that can go up there and make a mark like that. I mean, you have to realize that. It's not anyone that can walk in off the street and go to that location and make that kind of impact. I'm sure, they're, I'm sure you're a, a valued asset to them. Um, as you move forward with your business, uh, with your training, you guys have something else you're doing next weekend, right? Uh, you're also doing a uh, medieval combat or something along those lines? Yeah, one of the, the fun things, uh, another fine mess that Chase got us into, no, I actually really love it, <laughs> um, is we're, we're not afraid to take on, uh, you know, if it's about fighting, we're, we're willing to go see if we can make a difference. So we got recruited by uh, the Tulsa Tyrants to uh, train them. Uh, they're, uh, one of their key guys is uh, uh, Cole uh, Fowler. Cole Fowler, yeah. And, um, Cole is uh, uh, just, uh, what, 6'6", six, six, uh, about 325, and I've got him just about moving like Chase. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's, so anyway, we get, we get to do all the things with all the armor. It's a whole different realm because uh, you're running around with 80 to 100 pounds of steel on you. You know, you really, it's, uh, it's a wholly different world. You know, as a Marine, maybe you're running around with 150, 180 pounds of gear as you're trying to get from point A to point B. But, you know, you're, you're a pack animal. In this case, you know, you're a walking tank. So it's a, it's a little bit of difference. And that's a trip. That's a trip. And it's, what is, so is it, are you training this guy? Or are you guys actually competing next weekend? Well, is actually, it, coming is it up even here. next weekend? Is the next weekend. Uh, no, it is, uh, basically, they're, they're not for a little bit here. We have, uh, uh, the next really one coming up is the gentlemen here are doing one on, um, uh, uh, October 19th, yeah, which will be a third, Fred Masters, yeah. uh, another Fred Masters Master level Center, one. Yeah. Uh, November 9th, we have Warrior Forge coming in. They're another ICSU certified group. Really powerful for women. Uh, they empower women uh, to get out. You know, we've done a lot of self-defense for women, and we find that a lot of women, when, they, uh, when we're in those, we touch on their nerve, and <laughs> it's hard for them to have men in the room. So this is kind of like a good step if you've got, you know, for the ladies to get out there and get empowered so they can take that next step. Because, you know, they got to realize that sooner or later, their predator is probably a male. The, um, you're absolutely right. I have a student in the Gothi program in South Africa. He said that where he lives, one in 40 cars is hijacked. And just north of him, one in 10 cars is hijacked. Um, so the kind of thing that you're teaching here, uh, everybody wants to think it's all far off. You know, it's overseas. It's not happening here. But then you see something like going on in Minneapolis where random gangs are walking around yeah, attacking solitary off. individuals um, with little to no warning. And women are a prime target for most of that. So that seminar is coming up when? 
That'll be November 9th. Uh, November that, 9th. That particular one will be November 9th, Saturday. It'll be from 9 to 12. It's on our website, sansutulsa.com. You can right. find it out there, and we'll have the master out there pretty quick, too. But uh, Okay. And so what? what's the next thing for you, Brandon? You're going to San Diego for something? Uh, yeah. On, so the weekend before our master seminar will be uh, – Fred, the head guy, uh, will be in San Diego for his first ever San Diego seminar. And so um, I'll be going out there for October the 11th through the 14th to attend it on the 12th, um, just to kind of be there and uh, fill in the spot if anybody needs help as a level one instructor. We kind of go to these things and we take them and also get the help kind of uh, assist with all of them. And then uh, the next Saturday when I get back, the 19th, Chase and I will be doing our first tag team um, master of defense seminar here covering uh, level one concepts uh, we're going to kind of last time was more of a real introduction to the whole system and uh, a lot on the conditioning based and the aspect of uh, de be getting desensitized to getting hit like you do and you kind of alluded to earlier <laughs> in master of defense uh, so this time we're going to you still it's all kind of part of the system, but this time we're going to really work on kind of uh, their base concepts on retention. Uh, one of the things I feel like per myself personally as an instructor in it is a lot of times the oversight of how uh, Fred himself has really worked in different applications of retaining somebody for them to stay closer uh, for you to subdue them versus in the traditional aspect of striking distance with one another. Um, I feel it's kind of overlooked and not shared enough maybe with the general public so to speak so chase and i've been kind of uh working on that we actually released the first uh we uh we created excuse me an mds instagram page for tulsa oklahoma where we've been putting out uh small content and stuff like that trying to get people uh interested in that it's, it's called it's on instagram it's mds uh underscore oklahoma underscore tulsa uh we have okay. one video out uh we have a few photos and uh we actually just shot some more videos last week that we're going to try to release uh, one every couple of days to kind of just let everybody see some of the stuff. Uh, a lot of it's just some of our fun techniques and us playing with it uh, more closer towards the seminar. We'll kind of let out a little bit to some tidbits of what we'll be kind of going over and sharing to kind of get everybody, uh, you know, tantalizing over the seminar to come. Well, make sure you tag me in that stuff so I can share it across my platforms as well. For sure. For sure. I was uh, I was one huge pink belly when I got done with that, but I got to tell you, <laughs> Darren had just come home from the army. So that was like the first time I'd got to spend any time with Darren since he, wow. since he'd been gone in Germany for three years. And we got, yeah, we got to go in there and beat the shit out of each other. And it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was really cool. You know, it was, it was good stuff. Yeah. yeah and uh, of course I let him go first. So I could hit him harder. He's still like, yeah, smart man, smart man, <laughs> smart man, very smart. So Chase, well, you got you got a future you're building yourself too, man. I mean, what what do you, what's that going to look like for you? What do you got coming up? You got the maestro, you got your uh, the the uh, the uh, armor. I don't even know what you call it. ACL, what do you, what? it's the league. Actually. ACL. Armored I apologize. I, I, armored Combat League. Yes, thank you. Um, what are you going to do after all of that? Surely you got something else on your mind. Man, yeah, uh, right now, myself and my brother have been really hitting the grindstone again to get ready to go compete in the ring. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a kickboxing match because I have yet to kickbox as a professional yet, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm undefeated as a kickboxer amateur, so I'm really looking forward to going and putting that to the test on the pro circuit. Um, it's been a while. It's been at least – Three, almost four years we've been really studying the Krav and the Mastro and the Filipino martial arts and uh, it's time to dive back in there you know I'm still I think young. so too I'm still young he's still young you know that ain't gonna last and the last thing either of us want to be is gray and regretful you know yeah. I still got a lot to go. Let me tell you how to deal with that. You just change the goalpost. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I think I'll go write a book, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe several. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I tried it. Did it, been there, done that. Well, just average. <laughs> that's, the, that's the hardest thing to, to, to bite into, guys. I want to tell you that, that, you know, that's why you're an inspiration for a lot of people that you're not aware that you are. And I'm kind of hoping this video shares that because – people will settle for being average. They will Definitely. settle for just the regular routine. And there's- Hold on, and, I gotta spit. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, you know, Bert, I think one of the things that, but you uh, know what I mean. I mean, that's funny. You know, Brian, one of the things I think you're, you're, you're we're touching all around too is like you're talking about your business model or whatever, right? So yeah. at Sansi Tulsa, you know, we, we look at the martial arts world pretty much as three different types of schools, and Brian, anybody could probably break this up, but you know, you've got you got your martial way school. They're your Taekwondo, your karate schools. They're great. They teach your kids discipline and stuff like that. But it's kind of like it's uh, the function of a baseball bat. It's really for sport. You know, they watered it down today. They, you know, to keep it, you know, so that they don't, their liabilities are in there. And their whole goal is to sell memberships, you know, and things like that. You know, uh, you know, then you have your um, competitive martial arts schools. And, you know, you got some badasses there. They're your boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, you know, all that kind of stuff. And like Brandon talked about the other day, that's where we try to take it another step forward is that we really identify as being combat martial arts. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of hooey from our Sansu roots and a lot of things like that because we, we believe in having discretion and being able to bring things down. Because one of the things, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I went criminal justice. I worked in the Federal Bureau of Prisons for two years inside maximum security prisons. I'm five foot, I'd like to say six, but, uh, you know, and, uh, and one, of the, one of the things that cracked me up was uh, one day when the, the uh, duty sergeant looks up and says, okay, we're having some issues with some guys. He says, when they decide to go through MAC, here's what we're going to do. And I looked at him and said, what's up? And he said, well, the fact is they think you're the weak point. We know that's the foot. So we're just going to collapse around that and make that happen. You know, so, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the whole thing is number one is stand in your ground, you know, take your place, you know, and, in, in, in in the shield wall, if you will, or whatever you want to call that, your rightful place in life. And, you know, and the other thing too is, is uh, uh, not only are we giving them a real world thing, but we don't sell memberships. And that's what everybody else is doing. Everybody's out there trying to sell memberships. We actually enroll you into an educational plan for your safety. And that's the way we look at things, you know, and, and when people walk in here, when they walk out the door, they don't understand that that's our product. Um, we get people come in and they want to just, you know, think that we float off the ground because we're masters, you know, or whatever like that, you know, and, you know, it's, it's humorous, but, you know, the reality is, is that you got to be real with people, you know, the, the, and that's the contribution. If I'm in here, like a um, gentleman I heard recently from one of my students, um, you know, you're, you're spreading false truths and, and um, false confidence, you know, so that's the thing we want to make sure that we don't do uh, with that. You got to there is a there, there is an effort to water down. I mean, people want because people want all that convenience without the effort. People want that skill without the dedication. It's a it's a disingenuous uh, trade to go in there and and uh, do these things. So your listeners, they're doing, they're doing this business. What separates yeah. you from everybody yeah. else? You know what what makes you unique? And you know that was the thing is is for the longest time. Um, I was actually nervous and I, you know, what have you, I didn't take my rightful place and I feel like I held my sons back to their rightful place, you know, and today the reality is, is that we're recognized by uh, our good friend, Patrick Odell, who led us into uh, Ryan Speak, who's the president of the ICSU, Krav Maga Man of the Year, 1914, uh, or not, excuse me, 2014, 2014 I'm, I'm old. Good God, Krav's not even been yeah. around that long. No, uh-uh. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Grandmaster Felix Rollis, the uh, uh, full contact stick the fighting, you know, USA. The, the USA coach, yeah. and Fred Mastro, and, and to be held in such high regard with those guys, you know, it kind of wakes you up to the fact that, you know, um, we need to take that place and go out and share what we know and, and fill in that gap for this area. You, I mean, you, you see, that's another thing, too, is a lot of people don't understand the responsibility that they accept when they step up to these to these measuring plates. I mean... Uh, when I was talking with Justin, he was talking about climbing that ladder. He understands he's got a responsibility in that role, I think. And it's good to hear other other uh, studio owners say the same thing. There's a responsibility to that. Um, and it's, and it's more really, than just selling a product. Yeah, it's your relationships. You know, it's who you surround yourself by. You know, I mean, you can either, you know, soar with the uh, eagles or, you know, stay on the ground with the turkeys or whatever. I mean, whatever statement you want to make there. But, you know, the one on my left out that I really learned to appreciate here uh, not so long ago, is Greg Walsh from Wolf Brigade. Uh, the man right. is, is brilliant. I learned so much from him and using the mace and the kettlebells that it's improved my personal health. You know? I have so, used, I have, I use that mace. There's a, there's just a little 10 pound mace up there at my gym, and I use it 
I'll do sets of 30 in between incline bench press and it does an amazing, um, it's had an amazing effect on my shoulders. Yeah. Because I mean, they've been, they've hurt for so long. Now all of a sudden I'm using that kettle and Chris Jockey was the one that kind of started me on that. Um, that's it. There's a real, there's some real neat stuff involved in that mace training. Yeah, and it's just you know, the thing of it is it's his commitment too. The thing uh, I love about the guy is is it's no bullshit. When he comes in here, you know, you do it this way, and this is why, you know, yep, it's just yep. like the martial arts. He, matter of fact, what we did here was uh, basically a martial movement class, and he used the mace and the kettlebells with it, you know. So when you have people like that that you're working with and are able to look at you and take you to a whole other level, whether it's you know uh, us like journeymen, we have a lot more questions that we can ask and have further to go than perhaps the novice. You know, and that's the thing that people need to realize is quit closing their doors and to keep going forward. I'm 64 years old and I'm privileged as hell to be able to do it, this stuff. Yeah, that uh, you begin to understand which questions to ask uh, that I don't think a lot of young people do. Well, guys, I, I really appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to promote or like to add to it? Um, Man, uh, if you're watching this and this inspires you, just go reach down and take it. It's yours. You know, you can be badass too. Like, strength is inherent in the human experience. And if you dwell in weakness, then that is your fault. That's exactly right, man. The human body is an amazing machine. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. Every other machine breaks down. Yeah, don't run from the stress. You know, you need a crucible. The crucible is how we get through it in a one-hour martial arts. You know, um, especially if you're studying some of the things that these guys like to throw at you, you're going to have your ups and downs and your uh, exhilarations and your, you know, oh shit moments and everything. So you you're know, funny. They don't throw stuff at you. They throw you. <laughs> uh, which I I had to go do it because I can't sit around and talk this if I didn't let these guys throw me around. <laughs> yeah. You got to get in there and feel it, man. And it's a, it's a good stuff, man. It's good stuff. I, I will say that those few times that I've been up there have always been rewarding. And it had, it still has had, a, I took Scarlett up there and it had a, a positive impact on her too. Um, she at a young age, because if you guys begin to understand, she was work capable of more. And that was, uh, that was important to me. Uh, and I appreciate I appreciate that effort on y'all's part, and that dedication. Uh, you have a lot of champions coming out of there. Team Dark Horse is obviously going to enjoy a lot of success. Um, keep us all posted on what you got coming up. Feel free to share it, and we'll spread, we'll spread it across these platforms. And then someday, I'd really like to get you guys up to the Jungle Gym in the Bronx and. Uh, Man, just take him down a notch here. This side. <laughs> Justin Garcia, Master Jim himself. Master Jim, <laughs> he watches. Yeah. He is man, isn't he? He's he's no joke, man. He, but I love him to death. He's just I I had the opportunity to talk to him for a little bit before we do our, our first interview, and he's just he's an awesome cat, man. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I I really like to see that because I think it's really good because we're seeing a unified kind of message from two widely disparate platforms in two different geographical locations talking about being and developing and cultivating that inner strength and being men. And, and you see it um, in heathenry that, and that's, I think it's important because I think we're beginning to comprehend that it's more than just a goal. It's a, it's a, it's a journey. I mean, it's, it's just a constant journey. Your trials at 64 are different than Chase's at 26, right? 28 actually. 28, okay. Yeah. Man, uh, one more thing. Uh, if you or your tribe are interested in learning the martial arts, your kindred, whatever your group may be, if you're interested in learning real world martial arts, contact us. You can get a hold of me on my personal Facebook page. I run a page on Facebook called Warlord Society. Yes. Uh, and you can contact us on the new MDS page on Instagram. Uh, just send us a message. You can also send an email at www.sansuthalsa.com. And uh, we'll come out, man. You know, we'll We're all about trying to share this. Gathering and you know, you. we want to share this with everybody and let them all know, you know, that like you keep talking about how much more capable they are. 
You know, um, I really think most people are afraid of the failure more than the risk, but without the risk, you can't get the reward. And also with failure comes learning. I hate to admit that, but you know, the act you have to repeat is failure is or fail for you. You know, yeah, it's the first attempt in learning, uh, you know, and you have to get out there and you have to do this, you know, uh, I, I can't stress it enough. Uh, how spiritual it is to actually get out and do something physical with yourself and challenge yourself physically as much as it is to just have blind faith in something. It really is. I think that's one of the, uh, one of the, I've long contended that one of the things we were suckered with was that we began to believe that the best part of who and what we are originated out there. Right. And now all of a sudden we're in this spirituality and this faith that's telling, reminding us that no, that greatest part of who we are is right in here. And it's these kind of venues, these kind of activities that help us uh, truly cultivate that and figure it out again, because let's face it, we live in dramatic times. We live in, in times where there are world changing events happening at a breakneck pace with technology, with medicine, with space, with everything. Right. And we can't rely on something out there all the time. It's just not nothing right. it's builds camaraderie between you and your tribesmen like beating the absolute dog shit out of each other. That's oh, true. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Hey guys, I appreciate your time. I, I, it, was, you, Ryan. it was awesome stuff. Thank you so much for joining in. We're going to share this and we're going to have some fun with it. And I hope you guys enjoy a ton of right, success man. over the coming in the coming future. When the fights come up, let me know because I'm going to be there. We'll Look forward to seeing you soon, man. man. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Okay.